In this short video, we're going to muck about with trenches, ditches, berms and swales. What could be better than a swale? But let's start with the humble trench. A trench is a long hole in the ground. It can capture the water and it can hold it. Whereas a ditch can capture and hold water, but it usually gets the water to move, run away from the road and run away from the paddocks. Perhaps you had the same experience as I did when you learnt about ditches. Perhaps the first ditch you learnt about was the one that you accidentally rode your bicycle into as a child. A berm is a mound and usually this mound is put on the contour to contain liquids. Hugel culture is a design technique that uses berms. They're mounded gardens. The mounds are made out of wood and leaf litter. They sit slightly off the contour so that the water can keep moving down the hill. But here's a berm that I used that sits on the contour to trap water. Originally, the water ran straight down towards the house. And so I made a berm that trapped the water and it made the garden far more productive. Here's another instance of a berm. Because to make a swale on our property is very difficult. To dig takes hours. The soil is solid clay, like good enough to make pottery out of. Mound gardens are not a new thing. In the 1970s, they were very popular. A woman called Emile Hazlip coined the term synergistic gardens. And her method of creating diverse microclimates and different levels of moisture for the different plants proved to be very productive. So a swale is a combination of a trench and a berm and it sits on the contour line. It doesn't go downhill and it doesn't go uphill. If you need help with understanding contours then you can find this by looking at our videos about mapping. Here's a swale made out of quite a wide trench and the berm downhill is made just from the soil that was dug out to make the trench. And you see here that it's also a pathway. Making the pathways along the trench is really handy for compacting that soil and to keep it clear because gardeners tend to clear their pathways to reduce the trip hazards. And when you come to think about it, we rarely walk in the garden or work in the garden when it's raining. At this farm called Conscious Ground, in Belgium, the berm looks really tall, but in actual fact, it's on quite a steep slope. This food forest has a wide trench, and then the berm is created at the top of the slope. Further down the hill, where it starts to flatten out, the berms look to be almost at the same height. The trench is still wide, but the plants are moving across. The trench is wide enough for several people to walk along at the same time and for machinery to get in there to clear it. You can see this machine was used to mow and to get rid of a pumpkin vine and then the chickens have moved in. Ditches form naturally when there's nothing holding the soil together. In this patch of sparsely covered lawn, a gully has started. In fact, erosion commonly starts with just a little ditch between a road and a fence. So in practice, a swale needs three things. It needs the trench, it needs the berm, but it also needs plants because plants help to stop the swale from silting up and plants downhill on that berm help it to stop being eroded by water and by chickens and other animals. But what could be more exciting than a swale? On some sites, especially large, broadacre farms, key line channels are even more useful than swales. The swale is a trench on the contour, whereas the key line channel is a ditch that runs slightly off contour. They both catch water. In the case of the swale, it holds the water so that the water can seep through along the trench, whereas in the key line channel, it moves water from moist valley areas to dry ridges. So the swale gets water to seep through, whereas the key line irrigation channel gets the water to slowly flow. Mark Shepard of New Forest Farm in the United States 
demonstrates key line irrigation and he swears by it as one of the most useful tools in his farm design. What determines the rate of flow of the water? Well, I can tell you now that the steeper and most narrower ditches move the water the fastest, whereas wide and shallow ditches move the water slowly. What we need to do is move the water slowly. And when we have a closer look at the ditch I showed you earlier, we can see that the water is red with soil particles. It's muddy. Soil is slow to build and fast to lose. That's why water systems need to be slowly moving the water and use plants to trap the silt. These are the contours. Swales are dug on the contour. The water builds up in the swales and the mounded soil area gets wetter and that supports plants and trees that we grow on the mound and slightly down from the mound. On some sites the ridge is quite dry and the valleys are wet and so with key line irrigation they set about to move water from the wetter areas to the dry ridges. The key line channels are off contour so the water keeps slowly moving. It's not like a dam. This trench moves the water. So in comparison, swales hold water longer, and that might be what you're looking for. Whereas key line irrigation channels direct water to dry areas, that might be what you need. So it all depends on what the site needs.